Coming up right now is Slim Down. Sharon Osborne speaks out about her dramatic weight loss and why she regrets it. Also coming up, move over, flower girls. One bride is starting a new tradition, and it involves fireball. And later, find out how to make your own bloomin' onion with our friend Susie the Foodie. We've got your life and style guide from A to Z starting right now on Life Love Shopping. Welcome to Life Love Shopping, your life and style guide from A to Z. I'm your host, Andrea Jackson. If you live it, love it, or buy it, we talk about it right here on the show. We start today's show with Sharon Osborne, who admits she's gotten too skinny after using Ozempic to drop 30 pounds. Osborne, who spent more than a decade as host of The Talk before leaving in 2021, showed off her super skinny self on a recent Pierce Morgan show. She told Morgan she didn't actually want to get this thin, but it just kind of happened. The 70-year-old Osborne lost the weight over the course of four months. She said she suffered severe nausea from the weight loss injections. Osborne said at her skinniest, she weighed less than 100 pounds. However, at her heaviest, she was 230 pounds. Pop sensation Taylor Swift can add one more era to her status, billion era. Swift's net worth has just surpassed $1 billion thanks to the Eras Tour and her recently re-recorded albums. She did the re-recordings in order to own the rights to her entire catalog. According to Bloomberg, her net worth is around $1.1 billion. Swift is really part of an elite club with only a few musicians able to reach this billionaire status. Paul McCartney is one of them. His net worth is estimated at $1.1 two billion dollars. Swift opened her latest tour in March and kicked it off in Arizona. The tour, which includes international stops, is expected to bring in more than 1.5 billion dollars in revenue, depending of course on the ticket prices. And her concert movie, Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour, opened in mid-October and has earned more than 100 million dollars at the box office. Well, have you ever heard of the 27 Club? It refers to some of the most famous rock stars who died at the age of 27. Now, an AI company called Midjourney has released a series of images showing what those rockers would look like today if they were still alive. We'll start with Amy Winehouse. The retro rocker would have been 40 years old this year. AI Amy still sports her beehive hairstyle and thick black eyeliner. Next, we have Janis Joplin. Joplin died of a heroin overdose inside the Landmark Motor Hotel in October of 1970. She would have been 80 if she were still alive today. Jimi Hendrix is up next. He died just a few weeks before Joplin of a drug overdose. His AI image bears a striking resemblance to Morgan Freeman. And how about Jim Morrison? He died at the age of 27 in a bathtub in Paris from heart failure. His AI image features his signature long floppy locks turned gray. And check out AI Kurt Cobain. Bain if he were still alive today. The dark circles, five o'clock shadow, and long grungy hair continue into his later years. He would be 56 if he were still alive today. The midday slump can be an issue for many of us. Most people will go for an extra dose of caffeine or an energy drink to give them a boost. However, one nurse says, hold up, she's got a better idea and offered this advice. She says there are three common foods which will give you a natural boost of energy. They are bananas, oranges, and oats. Bananas are considered a brain superfood. They can give you a natural sugar hit and replenish your body's electrolytes. They're considered the perfect combination for hydration and energy. What about oranges instead of a double espresso? Not sure about this one, but I'll give it a whirl. Try pouring yourself a glass of fresh squeezed orange juice. Oranges can give you a boost of energy if you're feeling drowsy. And vitamin C also ramps up your collagen production. And oats are a great way to start the day. The grain is packed with fiber, which slowly releases glucose into the bloodstream. Oats can provide a way to slowly release energy throughout the entire day. Flower girls have been a long tradition at weddings. However, one new bride decided to put her own spin on the sweet flower girl trend by introducing the fireball girls. The bride switched things up by having her wedding party walk down the aisle throwing up mini bottles of the cinnamon flavored whiskey known as fireball. She added the caption, best decision I've ever made on her social media video featuring her unique twist on the wedding party. Well, something we all love is food, and Susie the Foodie is asking, have you ever tried making your own bloomin' onions? Have you ever tried pickled red onion bloomin' onions? These were seriously so delicious. I used a tomato-free Cajun dipping sauce and baby red onions. 
I started out by cutting the onions eight times to make a little flower shape. And then I made a pickle brine using vinegar, salt, sugar, garlic, water, pink peppercorns, and thyme. I let the onions pickle for two hours. Then I dried off some of the liquid. For the breading, I used a fried chicken flavored flour. I added a little bit of buttermilk and seasoning to the eggs. Anytime I have a recipe that needs breading, I use disposable containers so the cleanup is much easier. I then set my stove to medium heat for the oil so that the breading and onion pieces would stay together. I am so excited with how these turned out. The breading held on and the texture was super crispy. For more information on Susie the Foodie, you can follow her on Facebook or Instagram at Susie the Foodie. Well, Shana Alnwick flips, flips furniture and showcases her DIY projects on social media with the handle The Flipped Piece. She's got a great IKEA hack for a workbench. Take a look. I turned two IKEA Calyx units into the workbench of my dreams, and let me show you how. I thrifted two of these Calyx units, so I first started by sanding and cleaning them, and then I went to the store and bought some brackets. I got some no more nails and I used that to attach the two pieces together and also did the same thing with the brackets all throughout the piece to secure it and make sure that these two were stuck together and not coming apart anytime soon. Next I traced the edge of a paint jar and I used my jigsaw to round off those sharp edges so I wouldn't poke myself. I then smoothed out the top and then the piece looked like this. Then I used Gator Hide. This is a very tough wearing top coat and I sealed the top of my unit with this so it would be really easy to work on and not scratch as much. Then I had some spare hooks and I attached them to the side to hang things on. After the piece was drying, I turned it on its side and I attached these snap lock legs, which meant that I could easily move this huge unit and I can lock them back in place when I wanted it to be sturdy again, like so. Candy fans received some surprising news when the true meaning of Twix was revealed. Fuji on Twitter wanted to confirm the name was short for Twin Biscuit Sticks. Mars, the maker of Twix, responded with close and then replied that the name is short for Twin Sticks. The two bars of caramel and shortbread covered in chocolate came to the U.S. in 1979. Stay with us. Life Love Shopping continues in just a moment. Time for Life Love Shopping. If you live it, love it, or buy it, we talk about it on LLS. First up, have you ever heard of main character syndrome? It's when someone shows up as a guest at a big event and steals the show. A recent thread on Reddit called Wedding Shaming is calling out this guest for her barely there attire. Many who were at the beachside ceremony thought the guest took all the attention away from the bride. Some said at first glance they thought she was nude with just a few flowers strategically placed. While others say although the makeup artist didn't break the conventional rules of wearing white or cream to a wedding, she did become the main focus of the event. Many brides require attendees to follow a strict dress code for their big event so a guest doesn't end up drawing all the attention. One guy is stirring up the dating haters by saying that men should be the ones who pay for all the dates, married or not. He's known as the tough love coach. His real name is Jake Maddock and he says if women pick up the check, they're making a big mistake. I'm taking my wife on a date tonight, and this is how it works. Yesterday I said, hey, honey, do you want to go on a date with me tomorrow? She said she'd love to, so I asked her, I planned it, and I'm going to execute it, and I'm going to pay for it every time. I've taken my wife on thousands of dates by now, but I always plan it, execute it, ask her, pay for it. I do it all. I do all of it. Why? It's called chivalry. It's called masculine. It's because I have honor and integrity in who I am, and masculine and feminine energy to do it properly, okay? Relationships aren't about equality. They're about love and happiness. A lot of you guys have it mixed up with the masculine and feminine energy. It's not about equality. It's about love and happiness. Do it right. The man should pay for the date. Do it the correct way. Don't share it. 
plan it properly. Okay, if you love roller coasters, you're going to love this one. The final touches are being added to Britain's new Hyperia coaster. It will be Britain's tallest and fastest when it opens this spring. Take a look. So today is a real momentous occasion. We are actually putting in the final piece of Hyperia's track, which is the very, very top at 236 feet. It's an important milestone. We're putting that kind of final piece in at the top of that, that lift, the crowning glory. For myself, who actually was one of the designers designing this ride, it's incredible to see it go from what was on a piece of paper and on a computer screen, actually now a reality. Oh my goodness, that makes my stomach turn just thinking about it. Um, have you seen the next new IT bag? It's from French designer Caperni, and there's a NASA connection. The video posted to Instagram shows off a translucent oval in the shape of a small handbag, and to some it seems to show smoke trapped inside. The designer describes it as being made of 99% pure nothing and 1% glass. The air swipe bag is made from a NASA aerogel. Engineer say the space age material can be used to capture stardust or even help pad equipment like the Mars rover. However, it's now gracing the runways of Paris and Milan. The bag weighs about 33 grams, slightly more than about five sheets of paper. And despite it looking so small and delicate, the designer says it can hold an iPhone. Not sure about that, but Maybe. And the magic number could be 10,000 when it comes to your health and a cushy desk job. In Western countries like the U.S. and the U.K., workers spend an average of nine hours behind a desk each day. And experts agree that a sedentary lifestyle raises your chances for an early death. However, if you can get in 10,000 steps each day, equal to about five miles, you could offset the risk by nearly 40 percent. Researchers also say even low activity levels could slash your chance for a stroke by 29 percent. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control revealed numbers in a 2018 study that indicated one in 10 Americans cause of death was a result of physical inactivity. For more information on any of these stories, just head to our website, llsshow.com. Once you're there, you can check out previous episodes and get more details on all of our life, love, shopping topics. And don't forget to follow us on social media at LLS Show. You'll find all those connections right there on the website, llsshow.com. In this week's Boss Lady, we want you to meet Mindy Machok, who recently joined us on Daily Flash. She's the co-founder of Zen Dogs Therapy Network, her mission to bring peace, joy, and tail wagging love to those who need it most. So let me start with this question. How did you first get involved with therapy dogs? All right, well, um, my husband was in the hospital. He needed to have a, a double lung transplant. So we were having a particularly challenging day and uh, I needed to kind of regroup. So I, I left the room, I went down in the lobby of the hospital and there was a woman standing down there and she had a therapy dog and she said, hey, do you want to pet my dog? And I said, well, sure. So I went over. And I patted the dog and it instantly took me to a lot better place. I was able to collect my thoughts and focus on, you know, what we were dealing at hand there. So um, I decided right then when um, I got another dog, I was going to train it to be a therapy dog so I could actually give back to the hospital that had given me eight extra years with my husband. Oh, that's a terrific story. You've got Woody right there in your lap. What makes Woody such a good therapy dog? Tell us about her. Oh, she, well, first of all, she loves, loves people. Um, you know, you can't really train a dog to want to go up to people. You can make them comfortable with it, but they, they, they need to want to have that attention from strangers. Um, she's uh, very loving. She's very intuitive. Um, she's, and I've trained her, you know, it, it's, uh, a long process to kind of train them. Uh, you need to really socialize them and make sure that um, they're comfortable with all different kind of situations. Um, we, I took her to Home Depot and things so that she could uh, get used to shiny floors, loud noises, strangers approaching her. But to, overall, she just loves people. <laughs> Oh, that face. It is so adorable. I got to get to this. We've got some video and some images to share with our viewers. Tell me about the work you do in the community. Well, our Zen dogs, um, we all 
separately do our own thing. I, I do focus on the hospital, but as a group, we do um, a lot with first responders. I don't think a lot of people understand on a daily basis what, what they see and what they do. So we do try to uh, go to a lot, you know, fire stations, um, emergency management. We take our dogs and some brownies. We hang out with them. And uh, if they've had a bad call, they can kind of de-stress and pet our dogs. And we just talk about dogs. Everybody likes to talk about dogs. We do other things. We go to nursing homes. We go to um, a de-stress uh, teen time at the library. We also do community events like um, uh, we've done Out of the Darkness, which is a suicide prevention. Uh, that's that's always a, a tough one, but Boy, the dogs get loved on, they get hugged, tears, and you leave and you're just glad you were there for everybody. But our group, we, we really try to outreach wherever we're needed. Why do you think dogs bring such peace to people in difficult circumstances? I mean, just having Woody on this morning just brings like a sense of awe and calmness. You see that face and it just changes the tone or the energy of a room immediately. Right. Um, Dogs don't judge, you know, dogs also don't tell, you know, you can sit there and, and you can cry or hold or hug a dog and, and they, they don't make any, like I said, judgment on you. Um, I've read a lot of research and it, it also shows, you know, that when you pet a dog, it lowers your blood pressure. Um, it, you know, it, the good hormones, um, oxytocin, it increases that. I'm going to put her down real quick. She's sliding. <laughs> Um, and so I, I've read all of that research, but also um, I've seen it in action. I was at the hospital. There was a child who was having high blood pressure. She was nervous about a procedure that she was going to have. And I brought Woody into the room. And four minutes later, they retook her blood pressure and it was down. So I, I've seen I've seen people hugging and loving, but I've also seen the physical aspects of what these dogs can do. It truly is incredible. For more information on Mindy and her therapy dogs, check out her Facebook page, Zen Dogs Therapy Network. Here at Life Love Shopping, we love to get social. You can follow us on all of our social media channels at Life Love Shopping on Facebook and at Life Love Shopping on Instagram. Welcome back to Life Love Shopping, your life and style guide from A to Z. I'm your host, Andrea Jackson. Gen Z loves shopping for doomsday, with Americans spending around $11 billion on survival kits within the last year. According to research done by Finder, the average prepper spent around $150 on items like food, water, toilet paper, and even first aid kits. About 40% of Gen Zers say they spent money on first aid supplies or doomsday kits, edging out 39% of millennials. Companies like Preppy and Judy offer a basic prep kit starting at around 100 bucks and go into the thousands for the super advanced options. The core of their kits features a military grade three day supply of food and water with a five year shelf life. Well, if you're shopping for a survival kit, you just might be a fan of the Hunger Games. Let's take a peek at the prequel. Here's the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Welcome to the capital. You look like you shouldn't be here. I shouldn't, but I'm your mentor. A rebel. I am gonna get you out of here. You wanna protect people, and it's essential to accept what human beings are and what it takes to control them. You seem like a good man, Coralina Snow. I have seen what war does to people. Fueled with the terror of becoming prey. See how quickly we become predator? I want my enemies to see a rainbow of destruction engulfing the world. The monsters! All of you! Good luck with that poor little songbird. Where is she? mystery and mysteries have a way of driving people <laughs> mr snow let me ask you one final time what are the hunger games for information 
information on anything you've seen on the show today, head to our website, llsshow.com. You'll find previous episodes, information on all of our guests, where you can watch the show, and how to follow us on all of our social media channels. Thanks so much for joining us on Life Love Shopping, your life and style guide from A to Z.